Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will walk you through the process of backing up your Nextcloud files and database, ensuring that your data is safe and secure. If you haven't already watched my tutorial on setting up the Dolphin file manager, I highly recommend pausing this video and checking it out first. We'll be utilizing SSH and SFTP extensively throughout this tutorial. So it's essential to have a good understanding on how to set them up. On this screen, log into your local machine, not the one containing the data to be backed up, and establish a remote connection to your remote machine using the terminal. Access your root account and utilize SSH for the connection, ensuring to specify root and the accurate IP address. Once you're logged in, navigate to Nextcloud's web root directory. Here, we will bundle the themes folder and config.php file into a tar file because they contain critical configuration settings and customizations that are specific to your Nextcloud instance. This helps safeguard your configuration and appearance ensuring that you can quickly recover from any potential issues or data loss situations. We will then verify that the tar file exists, and then we will do the exact same thing against a data folder, which contains all important user data on your next cloud instance. Depending on how large your folder, this could take anywhere between seconds to a few minutes to complete. Next, we're going to create a database dump, which is a process of exporting the contents of a database into a single file. This file will contain all the data, tables, schema, and other relevant information stored in the database at a specific point in time. Database dumps are commonly used for backup purposes, data migration, or transferring a database from one system to another. Here, we are using the MySQL dump command to display the SQL dump content directly to the console. The benefit of this approach is that it allows us to review the SQL dump content directly on the screen without saving it to a file. Afterwards, we're going to save it to a file. Here, we're creating a database dump as well. However, we're using the right arrow to redirect the content into a .bak file. A file with a .bak extension typically indicates that it is a backup file. These files are created to provide a safety net in case the original file is lost, damaged, or accidentally modified. Now we're going to verify that our backups are present in our current directory. Finally, let's create a tar file of our SSH folder. Ensure that you are in the correct directory when doing so, as otherwise you may encounter an error during the process. Once we're done with that, I am going to check back in. It said no such file or directory because I was in the wrong directory. Next, we're going to navigate into the SSH folder and 
list the contents of the directory and verify that the tar file was created. Everything seems to be going smoothly thus far. Let's transition to our local machine and open two terminal windows. In each terminal, we will log in as the root user and establish a remote connection to the machine where the data to be backed up resides. The IP address specified here should be the local IP address of your remote host, which you used during the initial Nextcloud or Dolphin application setup. In each terminal window, we're going to verify the existence of our tar files. Yes, we've done that before, but we're going to do it again. And then we're going to open Dolphin and work on the file transfers. We have a total of two tar files and one BAK file in the Nextcloud directory. And we have one tar file in the SSH directory. And that is correct. That is what we're expecting. Now let's open Dolphin and establish an SFTP connection so that we can start working on our file transfers. I have my remote computer on the left and the local computer on the right. Next, we will navigate to the downloads folder on the right and the SSH directory on the left. While navigating through different folders on the left side, ensure that the IP address at the top remains selected. If you're moving into different directories, start by clicking the IP address to return to the root level. Here we're going to copy the SSH tar file on our remote machine to our downloads folder on our local machine. Next, we're going to navigate to our default Nextcloud directory and copy the two tar files as well as the BAK file to the downloads folder on our local machine. We have completed the file transfer process. I will demonstrate how to verify the integrity of the transferred files on both the remote and local machines to ensure that there is no tampering during the transfer. If the hashes don't match up, refrain from extracting the contents of the transferred files. It's safer to delete them and redo the transfer. It's highly likely that there's no tampering, but it's always a good practice to confirm. In this new window, I am going to switch to the root user account, and then I will navigate to the downloads folder. Move the new terminal window to the right side of your screen. That way, it will be easier to do comparisons. As shown here, I performed the integrity check on one file. Feel free to run it on the other files as well. Backups can take up a lot of space, and if space is going to be an issue on your remote computer, feel free to remove your 
tar files and the .bak file. When you're typing a file name and you are unsure whether or not you're putting in the correct file name, then you can press the tab key and that will then give you a list of suggestions to choose from. And that is exactly what I did here. After the removal of the files, I am printing the contents of my current directory to verify that the files were removed. The SSH tar file is relatively small, but I have decided to remove it anyway. The files should now be removed, but we're going to verify the removal one last time in Dolphin File Manager by selecting white space in the next cloud window and pressing the F5 key. Lastly, it's essential to store your backup securely. Transfer the downloaded files to an external hard drive to ensure redundancy and protection against data loss. Here, I am going to remove the port forwarding configuration on our local router to prevent unauthorized access to our SSH port on our remote machine. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tutorials. Thank you for watching.